Committee's webinar, so credit rating in action. It's the last event as part of SCQF week, um, and I'm delighted to have Joseph Troden from Fuel Change and Douglas Dixon from Dumfries and Galloway College presenting for us today. You'll be hearing from them shortly in terms of the benefits and experiences that they gained working together to credit rate the Fuel Change Challenge programme, which is owned by Fuel Change and was credit rated by Dumfries and Galloway College. I thought it might be useful just to take a minute or two just to set some key facts um, and resources that I'm sure you'll find useful, um, whether you're here today as an existing programme owner um, or a credit rating body interested in finding out more about third party credit rating. So just looking at some of the, uh, the statistics and to set the scene, there are now more than 11,500 programmes on the SCQF and more than a thousand of these programmes are owned by employers, charities, third party, uh, third sector organisations uh, and many organisations working with young people. There are 56 different credit rating bodies that can credit rate and add programmes to the SCQF. And these, as many of you already know, range from Scotland's colleges, Scotland's higher education institutions to SQA, and also a small number of approved um, organisations such as the Scottish Police College, the Institute of Chartered Accountants, to name only a few. It's important to, to, to highlight that not all credit rating bodies actually offer third party credit rating and that's the service when um, a, a credit rating body credit rates a programme um, that belongs to another organisation. But, but many do and that's what you'll hear more of um, as part of today's we webinar. I think it's really interesting to note that there are more than 300 different organisations that own the programmes that are on the SCQF and that number grows as more and more organisations recognise the benefits to them, to their learners or to their employers, employees, sorry, um, as to as to have their uh, having their programme credit rated. Just a couple of key resources um, to highlight and I will pop these in the link. Um, just to um, share with you that have been um, produced fairly recently. So if you're here in the capacity as a, either a programme owner or someone that is thinking of having a programme credit rated, the third party credit rating guide is a really useful reference point for you and um, lots of frequently asked questions and will also set out some of the different services our credit rating bodies can offer you. Equally, if you're here as a credit rating body, there's a really great suite of information notes that have been written and are on the support for credit rating bodies page of our website. Again, we've got a suite of different um, notes that are there, but there's one in particular that focuses on third party credit rating and looking at those initial steps to maybe um, offering a, a credit rating service to a third party to some of the ongoing uh, quality assurance processes um, that you'll be asked to, to follow. So without further ado, I am going to pass you over to Joseph and um, Douglas. Um, there'll be opportunities for questions at the end of today's session, and I hope you um, enjoy uh, the, the presentation that's coming up. Thanks very much, Helen. Are we good to share the, the slides? I'm just loading them now. Thank you. Excellent. I'm sorry, I don't have any filler material, so there was that bit of a pause there, but here's the meat that we're getting into. So um, uh, what I'm going to do here, this is about working in partnership uh, with, as we did, to credit rate this programme. So next slide, please. Just to say a bit of background as to who Fuel Change are. So these bullet points will come up. Next point, please. Do you want me forward, forward one? It unfortunately is not coming. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, so... For us at Fuel Change, it is all about engaging the next generation in this positive transition to net zero. So what we are doing is running a challenge programme that encourages them to think about 
the business applications of sustainability. So the this transition is happening, like it's happening at pace and it is going to continue to happen. So it's about equipping them with the knowledge, but also the skills to solve these problems. And that's what the challenge program is designed to do. Uh, next slide, please. So we've worked with over 100 companies in all sorts of different sectors. Sometimes people hear fuel change and think that it is, you know, just related to things like hydrogen and fuels of the future. But it's much, much broader than that. It's really about fueling change across all different industries in many different ways. Next slide, please. So we've had over 2000 participants come through our programme. Um, we have a national program for 16 to 24 year olds. It's apprentices, graduates and other people that are in that age bracket. And we also have a program in schools, which is the one that we are here to talk about today. Next slide, please. So the one that we're talking about just now is a full academic year and it's SEQF level six, eight credit points, so 80 nominal hours. And what they're doing on our programme is they use teamwork and innovation to work on real world industry problems. So there's a few examples that are down there just so you've got a sense of what this programme actually is. Um, making logistics more sustainable, the future of rural communities, food and farming. The challenges tend to be broad enough to give them scope to take it in a direction that's interesting to them, but still with an exam question that they're seeking to answer. Next slide, please. And just to talk you through like what that looks like in practice. So when we were doing this with the, the national programmes and, and workplaces, then schools were uh, asking us if we could do something with them as well. We have a, a product that's in schools called Core, which is a, a set of eight lessons for each each year uh, within a school environment. But they want they really like this. Can we get them working on these innovation type problems, a real world challenge, uh, getting them to think about transformative partnerships. So what we have is a version that work, runs across the academic year and it's in these three what are called sprints. They're just a block of time with an, a specific outcome. So in that first sprint, they are trying to gel as a team and then they decide what which of those challenges they'll take on. They'll do a bit of research and they'll do a bit of problem analysis. And then in that second sprint, they are starting to work up ideas. So what's your idea? How do you apply sustainability to it before reviewing their solution and putting forward a draft submission? And then in that third sprint, they're really starting to refine that with an end goal of presenting it to a panel of expert judges. So they're going through this whole problem solving process and learn about sustainability as they go. Next slide, please. So as much as it is absolutely essential that they have to develop the, the knowledge and the understanding, one of the key things for us is the meta skills. So really it is about how do you evidence that decision making, how you give them that experience of communication, all the things that employers are telling us consistently that they're looking for. So making sure that they are baked in right the way through that process, but also fundamentally when it comes to accreditation that we can evidence it properly. Uh, next slide, please. So this is why we chose to have it rated, because schools wanted it rated. We did have an option that was a bit of an insert into other programmes because some schools asked us for that. But far and away, when it came to the schools, they were saying, is it credit rated? And since we got it credit rated, there is a lot more interest in it. And of course there is, because you're setting up against various other things that are credit rated. So if you're looking for UCAS points, you want them. You know, if you're if you're up against an elective that's got them, you're just you're not going to stand a chance. Ultimately, the right to ask for it and it creates this clarity of offer and expectation. So in that schools environment for us, being able to say it's SCQF level six, it's eight, 80 notional hours, like they get that straight away and it gives them like confidence. <clears throat> and this evidence based evaluation piece, it made us think about, well, how do we know that we're teaching decision making? How do we know that there's leadership? How do we know that there's communication? What is the evidence that we'll use and what's solid enough to get credit rated and not just, you know, an, an opinion almost? Um, next slide, please. So the benefits of doing that with Dumfries and Galloway were the, this rigour. You know, I was just talking about how do you know that you're doing that thing? It really encouraged us in a good way, in a very positive way to hold ourselves accountable for making sure that we are actually delivering on that. So that then fed into the creation of the learning materials. If you know what you're trying to work on and you know what an evidence point would be, it actually helps you to then create those learning materials because you're working towards that end goal. 
and the verification process as well to make sure that it's, it's that whole accountability across the piece that you, you're saying you're delivering these things. How do you know that you're doing that? You got your evidence point and then the, the verification. Everybody just feels much more confident about what's going on. And of course, if you if you're familiar with what insight points are, um, but you need them for uh, UCAS applications. The schools want them because it, it determines the amount of insight, uh, insight points relates to where they rank on their, their school tables, you know, the performance tables. So by getting it um, credit rated and then getting it on the insight register, again, it's just it becomes more attractive because if you've got a sustainability program and it's mind blowing, well, actually, I'm, but I'm tracked against how many are getting SEQF level six points and where we are in the insight uh, tables doesn't matter how good this thing is because it's not really solving the problem that you know that that establishment the education establishment had so it just benefited everybody I think that's me next slide Douglas okay. good afternoon everyone um I just want to maybe give a wee bit of background in terms of Dumfries and Galloway College um, just I, I know some uh, within the sector uh, may have an awareness uh, of who we are. Um, we are based in, uh, as the name suggests, uh, Dumfries, and we also have a campus in uh, Stranraer, hence one large dot, which is our largest campus in Dumfries, and our smaller dot, which is our uh, campus within Stranraer. Um, in terms of where we are, we are the single college within one region, which is, you would think, relatively uncomplicated, but obviously rural region, quite a large geographic area. So we've got a lot of territory to cover. We work with over 200 local employers, and also we see ourselves within our region as a sector leader in climate change. And that probably starts to give you a bit of an idea of why when fuel change came along to speak to us, why it was then an attractive proposition uh, to consider and look at credit rating. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms in terms of where we are, we um, have um, won a, a significant number of awards around uh, the sustainability that we've introduced in terms of elements within the campus, elements within our curriculum, and also it's just our overall focus on you know the wider world and society um, so in terms of where we are um, we have been a consistent member uh, of the education association for universities and colleges we were shortlisted for campus of the future due to the sustainable uh, impact we've had on campus and also development of our curriculum uh, and obviously, in terms of, um, you know, for instance, CDN College Development Network, we were Sustainable Institution of the Year. So there's a number of things that you will start to see in terms of our offer, where sustainability features and also our journey towards net zero. Next slide, please. So in terms of our discussion, you know, with fuel change, we had some knowledge of who, who fuel change were. We didn't know the specifics of their programme. And one of the first conversations that Joseph and I had, um, and it, it was, I guess, this is where, you know, if you're coming from a background in education and if you're coming from a background in qualifications development, you realise that you speak a specific language and the critical bit for us within the relationship was being able to take and translate what you know from an educational viewpoint towards working with a client who may not necessarily at the beginning speak the same language. So there, there were some key things that we obviously wanted to satisfy ourselves because I think within the relationship setting expectation is really critical. So the first thing we were looking at was the, the qualification itself, how many hours of learning. So what we were testing out was the principles of credit rating. So the first bit was yes, it was more than 10 hours of learning. So that was that was straightforward. The next bit is often the bit when you're dealing with uh, external organisations that often causes some problems is, you know, within education, we are familiar with what makes a clear outcome of learning. In this instance, fuel change was developed by a school teacher um, who um, had experience within qualifications development and in delivery. So actually, and from our perspective, 
it made it relatively straightforward because it had been originally written into outcomes of learning. What then became our main discussion topics were, was the use of assessment and what does assessment look like within the qualifications? And often the, you know, the, the experience of uh, when you talk about assessment, everyone automatically goes towards, you know, examination. Uh, and that was the bit that we were having a, a, a had a really good discussion around what was the appropriate assessment method for fuel change because in this term we we didn't want it to simply be you know that young people went along and sat in a room and answered a series of questions we wanted it to be live we wanted young people to be able to develop meta skills uh, and be able to um and actually ultimately solve real world problems so that so then our, our discussion became around wh what's the quality checks that you currently have and that actually was probably our, our largest piece of work uh, was actually looking at the development of a quality assurance system in terms of ensuring that internal checks are in place and external checks are in place. So over the four principles, it was probably the, the latter two that we probably spent most time on. Uh, and just, you know, it, it was back to that, you know, having clear uh, understanding of what the implications were throughout the overall process. And I think one of the key bits, you know, in our early discussion was often because there was the development of outcomes of learning, our discussion point was, well, where do you as, you know, the organisation see the qualifications sitting within the SCQF? Because if you're choosing uh, particular verbs around the outcomes, it, it tends to suggest that it's heading in a particular direction. Uh, and I think that was obviously one of the clear things that we wanted to be able to test out as we looked at what the outcomes were and, and then went through the actual pr internal principles within the college. Next slide, please. So in terms of why we took this on, because in terms of our college strategy, we have a clear direction towards net zero. So actually the qualification itself fitted with our direction of travel. And I think the other aspect of it was that we see that saw there was a real opportunity um, within fuel change at the time we were speaking did not operate within our region. And we saw there was an opportunity for fuel change to operate in our region and to be able to bring benefit to young people. But we saw the wider benefit, you know, to Scotland that having a product that is qualification that is credit rated makes a significant difference. The other aspect was we had not engaged within the college in third party credit rating. So we also saw it as an opportunity to build, build our internal capacity uh, and to be able to, to work on that um, basis. Ultimately, as Joseph said, ultimately this is about val value to the qualification itself. It has significantly expanded um, for next academic year in terms of the number of schools that are going to uh, take up the qualification. And that's because of the attractiveness. It is credit rated and also clearly what it's recognising is the skills of the, the young people involved. Next slide, please. So. What, what were the kind of things that we looked at that we had to change? We obviously had an, in, an internal uh, credit rating um, uh, process with a, a series of um, checks and balances to make sure that when we internally credit rate, it's in place. What, what we added to it was we added some additional um, steps to the process because obviously we were very clear and uh, that when you're working with an, a, an external organization that what we need to what we need to uh, identify is there's going to be a certificate issued. We needed to work with um, fuel change around what that would look like, making sure it fulfilled the requirements. We had to work around um, what quality assurance would look like and also annual checks in terms of working with fuel change to identify, you know, what's the most appropriate point for us to have a further conversation, you know, and we were very conscious that this was a larger scale rollout, rollout than fuel change had engaged in in their first year of operation. Uh, and what we were what we were looking at was we needed an appropriate point to come back and revisit 
what had happened when it had um, you know, landed with the young people and with the teachers involved and what was the feedback and is there a need for us to make changes? So it's, the, the review point was is particularly important and it's one that's coming up soon. The one that I can emphasise enough is the communication process. And I mean, in terms of where we were, Joseph and I um, took over a period of time, uh, one to two hours at each uh, opportunity to have a discussion to visit the, the progress and to look at specific elements. So when we were building the assessment process, it, it was to be very clear in what, what is appropriate assessment. In this instance, it's a logbook, which is a bit like, a, I suppose, a, an SBQ type model. For those of you familiar with that process that the, the young people build up, uh, as they move through, through each of the elements and it tracks their learning. Um, so what we were looking at was having a conversation around what we see as appropriate assessment here. And there was a bit of translation in terms of the of the actual process uh, and actually then making sure that that matched um, the actual learning material itself. And that's probably where a lot of our early conversation got to. And I think, you know, it really has worked particularly well in terms of translating what we know in terms of education into a language that is straightforward uh, and uncomplicated. And I think that's the bit we tried to aim at was making sure that we were using terminology that was very clear uh, and also looking at what was best for young people uh, but also not trying to, you know, force a, a particular point on you know, the, the client themselves in terms of, you know, because we all come from a particular education background with some uh, level of bias. Next slide, please. And I think this is back to Joseph. Oh, you're muted, Joseph. Yeah, it's just the last slide there because we were asked about the, the future plans and for us it is scale in the programme. So <clears throat> we've gone from six schools this year to 36 and counting for next. Um, there are feedback loops that are in place, so we will be making amendments and we'll be working closely with Dumfries and Galloway to um, you know, to, to work those through and make sure that they're meet, meeting the same um, standards. The workplace qualification. So because this has worked well for us, the national program that I was talking to you about, we're, we want to explore um, making that a formal qualification. I'll be honest, it's, it's, it can be like the double edged sword because you need the agility for the school. The school's one is not going to change when it rolls out. So from a you know, from a provider point of view and the type of thing that we do, you need to weigh up that sort of agility of some of these programmes versus the benefit of um, getting the formal qualification. But it just depends on where it's going to land and what the highest value is and what the best experience is for the, the students. But it's definitely something we're going to be looking at. And Douglas uh, alluded to the, the point there about the, the high standards in plain language and the responsiveness. Because it, do, it does make a big difference um, for us around, you know, people being responsive. Um, and when we've got a concern, you know, something that we need to work through, they were there. So, yeah, I mean, it was just it was really good to work with them. I think the, the two quick things about the, the develop with a teacher, um, because we had somebody who was a teacher working with us. So we had the programme and we worked with the teacher to then, um, you know, Put it in place for schools they were almost acting as that bridge like they you still needed the Dumfries and Galloway College obviously you know for this accreditation piece but there was like a bridge there and um, which was really useful for us that there was like just almost like a translator at times in the middle but that was probably the most useful thing at the start just so we could get on a similar footing and we could know where we were coming from and then, um, you know, we were kind of working just directly together. So, yeah, that, that was fundamental. And a quick shout out, I think, just to finish to uh, Nicola Smith, who was an absolute superstar when we were going through this. Um, I don't know if people know her. I don't know if you're in charge of her uh, wage rises in any way there, Helen, but she was absolutely epic. So just a quick shout out to her too. 
that's that's great. Um, thank you both, uh, Joseph and Douglas. And I, I think, unfortunately, I'm not sure if Nicola's on the call today or not. I sincerely hope she is. Uh, Nicola does a lot of work with our um, employers and with, with veterans, actually. And, and to answer the question, unfortunately, I have no control over um, uh, raises for staff it would be lovely if i had that uh, that power but i hope um you've all enjoyed the the session and what we'll do is we'll stop recording and really just open the floor up and um, because i know some of you are are working colleges and 